I know I'm quite behind with my videos and things like this, so I thought I'd give you a quick, quick update and a little demonstration on the vapor blaster because I've now I've moved it up to my upper shop and we've been moving things around, Jerry and I, yesterday. Uh, just tell you what's going on. Uh, the Florida one, we dug it out the back. <laughs> it's been there, it's been packed for 18 months. So we've dug it out because it's going back at the end of this month. The guy's flying up to take it back. Um, I took it out for a run yesterday and the front brake pipe's broke. Um, you know the pipe that goes from your flex hose to your caliper? Um, been stood in the damp, it's not rust proof, it wasn't part of the job. So, and of course, Florida cars, you should uh, always think that Florida cars, there are, they are rust free, but not necessarily because a lot of people live by the coast and they can get rusty. We've already replaced the rear cross member on this. There may be other things later, we don't know. So as you can see down here, I've got my wood in for winter. This is just is last year's, so we're gonna use this up. Now another thing you'll probably see down stuck down here is the 2.5 engine. Now, there is a story behind that because <laughs> I realized that you cannot do the valve timing or the ignition timing or put the skew gear in until you have the head on. Nothing wrong with that. See, heads on. Only I forgot to order the bloody car plugs for the, that go in the head. I, I realized I took them out to sandblast inside the head to get any corrosion out. And uh, that's that. So what I've done is I've just temporarily boxed it up, put the head on, but not talked it down. So I'm going to do a video when those parts come and explain properly how this goes together and how you can get the distributor arm you know the rotor arm in the right position because if you go by the book you'll be wrong because these engines were designed for petrol and diesel and it emphasizes more on the diesel than the petrol which is timed up on the the exhaust peak of number one cylinder see it's the opposite way around and that's why we're 180 degrees out now what what we're going to do today like I say we're going to I'm going to show you a little experiment with this uh, blasting cabinet. Um, this is a valve cover that's in pretty ratty condition. Um, so I'm going to try and put the camera up here and see how fast this will go with a splash of aluminium oxide, this 220 grit, in the mix of glass beads. It should be good. Talking about other things that's been moving around, which I've looked down here. Oh, that's my sound blaster. Where am I? Oh, down here. I've moved the 300 TDI engine gearbox, etc., etc., on the on the test frame down here because I really want to spend. So I wanted to spend some time on it this summer to get it done, but all these jobs kept piling in and in and in, and I, I just really want to do my stuff. And over there in the corner, that's going to be that was my old vapor blaster. So I'm going to do that one as a parts washer. I think it'd be kind of interesting. Then my parts washer can go in the my old parts washer can go in the container. So we've been moving things around, getting ready for winter. But let's cut the cut to the chase and let's see what this vapor blaster does. And I was doing a little video on Sunday about descriptions of this uh, two point five uh, two point two five engine two and a quarter. And uh, I'll put that out later. But I also dug out. This is the original carburetor of it. I haven't got the manifolds for it, but I've got the original carburetor. This was a twin choke that was fitted to the 2.25s and the 2.5s. Uh, it's a monstrosity of a thing. And I haven't got all the parts, you know, like to, to bolt it onto this one, so it'll probably just get a Weber. Um, but I thought we'll just do a little bit of blasting on one side to see what it looks like. Now, I'm not sure if I can get the camera into this machine to see. Um, well, let's give it a go. So I put a bit of aluminium oxide in. Let's see what difference this makes. Now 
Now I know that you, it's not good to clean carbs up with sandblast or anything like that. But this can be stripped down now and cleaned without having all the contaminants on the outside. And like I say, I'm doing this real time for you guys. If you can see, right there. Very hard to uh, to film this. But it does make a nice job. Now I say this wasn't uh, this carb wasn't uh, power washed off or anything like that first. Wasn't put in the parts washer. Maybe it should have been. But this this is absolutely what this machine was for. Because there's no way on earth you could do this as quick. Like I said, I keep repeating myself sometimes because I can't remember what I said, but this is ideal now to strip down and clean each individual part. If you see what I mean. Because you're not contaminating it with dirt. I see a lot of people cleaning carbs and think you can just put them back on again. Uh, not really. There's a lot more to it than that. But you have to keep changing your angles and things like that, you know what I mean? The one thing about this is I'll do it real time. And then we can have a look and look back at the video and see how long it actually took. There'll be bits I've missed naturally, because it's, it's very difficult to see with the light. But that bit of aluminium oxide just helps cut, cut through the dirt a bit. But it, it's not detrimental to the, uh, the finish. Oh, let's do the bloody plastic as well, eh? What's that looking like? There's a few bits down there we've got to get off. Yeah, just in there. I don't think I'd use this for taking rust off. A lot of people say you can take rust and paint off, but I don't think I'd bother with that. Well, 
well, let's have a quick look and see what that looks like. Mm, we'll give it a quick wash off first. And like I say, I can spend a couple of hours, well, a few minutes, but let's see how, how it looks after those few minutes. Well, as you can see there, it's done quite well. There's a little bit of, you see, when you're in the cabinet with the light on, it shadows these bits. But, you know, like I say, a little bit more time with that carb, and it'll come up just like new. But look at the intricate detail it can get into here, all these little corners and bits and pieces. It's lovely. I mean, there's no way you can get into there without sandblasting. The problem with sandblasting is when you go into cavities like this, the sand bounces back. So there'll be like an air pocket there. And it's, it's a very strange thing when you're like trying to sandblast into the bottom of a cup. It doesn't so always work because the air pressure bounces, pushes it back. So I'm going to spend a bit more time on that. We'll come back and have a look when it's finished. So there you go. I spent 15 minutes total on this. There are one or two little spots I couldn't quite get into because of this big plastic piece. But uh, it's not too bad, is it? There's a little bit under there I missed. But you know, this carb's pretty much shot. There's This linkage has come off here. Well, it's not a shot, you could be fixed. The volume screw's snapped off here. But like I say, look at, look at that detail inside there. You would never get that with a wire brush or anything. It's got right down deep inside those cavities. You, you can't even touch them. So that's really, really good. We're going to keep that as a, uh, an example of how you can clean a cab. Actually, I should have just done half of it, shouldn't I, really thinking about it? What a numpty. But, um, yeah, it's come up really well. I mean, uh, all the brass work's come up nice. Pretty good. Just a bit disappointed about that bit. I think I'll pop it back in. Anyway, hope you like that. That's what's been going on. Uh, well, I was uh, kind of excited about moving things around and keeping you up to date, so now I've got to put some brake pipes on that thing. I hope that's the last. Mm -hmm.